Baldur's Gate 3, Act 2, Guide. A 100% full Act 2 map guide. What we're gonna cover here is absolutely everything. All encounters, loot, quests, everything that you can find in Act 2. So what is Act 2? It's a very specific area, legged with a curse that turned everyone into shadows. A war on three sides between Selunites, Shar worshippers and the resistance, or better to say, Harpers. We got everything here, from the absolute to amazing boss fights and some breathtaking areas. So, if you'll find this video helpful, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. It took a lot of time for me, while it only takes one second of your time. Without any further delay, let's go. So, Deck 2 is a much smaller map in size and scale compared to Act 1. This would be the entire map, but there's a lot of mini dungeons and we're gonna visit them all. So how does it start? If you decided to go from the Underdark and from the Elevator, you will end up here. If you decided to pass through the mountains where the crash is, or better to say through the Monastery path, then you're gonna start here. No matter how you put it, starts are absolutely the same and less light is pretty much close by. Now what is the main difference? If you play as a good guy, you should basically go from the Underdark. If you play as evil and you wanna worship the Absolute, okay, or you wanna infiltrate the Moonrise Towers, you will go from the Crash. That's the main difference. Okay, so pick where you wanna go. I entered from the Underdark. On the next run, I'll enter from Crash. Different setup. If you enter from Crash, Absolute will wait for you over here. Okay, a goblin that's gonna send you right to the Moonrise Tower. If you enter from here, you will save Harpers and then you're gonna be transferred to the Last Light. So basically, it's the same map, but with different routes. Now, what are we gonna cover? This we can say it's all right wing, okay, right wing town and the surroundings, battlegrounds and so on. We're gonna start from the east side and then we're gonna do the west side. Okay, so basically this map is divided by three bridges and we're gonna cover the eastern side first. Your main objective for this map, stop the curse or spread the curse even further. Your choice. No matter how you put it, encounters will remain the same. So once we enter from the elevator, from the Underdark, the first thing that you want to do is loot a chest right over here on the map. After the chest, you will slowly cross down the bridge, loot items that are over here. There's nothing important, to be honest. And there's going to be a first encounter with the shadows where you're going to save Harpers. They're going to tell you about the hideout. And the next thing you want to do is transfer to the hideout. Now, before you do the hideout, you also want to loot a chest here. And once you loot the chest over here, you will go down south and you will loot another ring that's right in a barrel. You can easily find it with perception. Well, again, south from the chest is a dig spot. So if we're done with the chest, with a dig spot and with a barrel ring, down south you can trigger an ambush. Best to be triggered over here from the bridge where you're gonna fight some blighted plants. So the best opening is from here, not from here, not from here, it's from here, because you can sneak and you can surprise the enemies. Once you finish with the ambush, you want to find a key down south and open the chest on the left. That would be this area. After we're done with this part, you're gonna go to the right, you're gonna loot the chest over here, you're gonna jump or use Misty Step, and you're gonna collect... I say nothing, but there are some notes and so on. Basically, there is no loot, that's why it's nothing. But you will collect notes for the story and so on. Cross back again, go up and trigger the quest with the NPC in this area. What is there to say about NPC in this area? He leaves solid loot if you decide to steal from him. He leaves 150 experience on kill and he leaves very poor loot on kill. He will give you a meddling book quest that's far far later in the game so take the quest for the extra xp and kill him after you find the book and 
convert the quest here. So now that we're done with this entire part over here, there's only this two left. And over here will be a Raven Ambush, easily resolved by Shadowheart. Easily resolved by Shadowheart. It's on my channel if you want to find out how to kill them in less than 10 seconds. After you're done with the Raven Ambush, you're going to go open up a chest, cross the bridge and enter the main hub of the Act 2, the Last Light Inn. What is there to say about the Last Light Inn? Last Light Inn is full to the brim with quests for the entire map. The first thing once you cross the bridge will be a trader. Very good to steal from, very good to buy items from. There's some great gear on this trader over here, so do not miss that one. Also, the first waypoint awaits you on the right side as you enter. Over here, at the center of the last light in, you will need to have Will in your party and trigger the quest for his father, right over here on the spot. Once you're done with Will's father, you're gonna sum people will have Carla's blacksmith available for further upgrades and some will have him all the way up in Act 3. So if you don't have a blacksmith here, he's probably in the capital in Baldur's Gate. Anyways, on the second floor of this building, you can find very good loot. Search it out thoroughly. Once we're done with this part, you can go up here and you can trigger the quest with Beck's husband to find Beck's husband. Tiefling's quest, basically. Save the slaves. On completion, once you find her husband, and I'll speak about it later on, you will receive additional experience. Around 300 or so XP. Now, once we're done with this part, you're gonna transfer all the way up. Not, not from the bridge, because it's full with traps. Okay. So we don't go from the bridge. We're gonna go down here, pass through this, go up there, and... With a strength potion, or with any character that has 20 plus strength, you can wreck the rocks over here and get some solid loot. Do it immediately. Then we're gonna go back, the same route, or you can just TP to the portal. And now we go through here, all the way down the stairs, and there's a chest awaiting for you here, as well as Jonas. Well, I think it was his girlfriend, or no matter what, speak with her. Now, also, before entering the inn, you want to explore everywhere, look what you can, okay? And there is a dig spot right over here, outside of the inn. This is not inside the inn, because there's two floors, the map can't show it. It's outside, close to the wall. There is a dig, you need to dig manually, because you can't detect it with perception. And now, we can enter the inn. The first trader is right around the corner, when you enter. There is Jahira waiting for you over here. So, do this too first. Collect the main quest about the Shadow Curse. And in this part of the inn, there's tons of NPCs, Tieflings, Alfira, and so on. Collect all the quests that you can. Speak with every single NPC on this map. Speak with every single NPC in the inn. They give a lot of quests. You can also loot a chest over here. And on this side of the inn would be Astarion's quest with the Devil. So, make sure that you have Astarion in your team once you trigger this quest. To the right is a gnome quest with gnome slaves. You don't need a specific origin character, you can insta-trigger this quest. Basically, the quest that connects all of the NPCs in the Last Light Inn is the removal of the Shadow Curse and saving slaves, those that are missing, those that are in the Arcane Tower, Moonlight Tower prison. Now, once we're done with all of these NPCs and collecting quests and trading and so on, you're gonna enter this room, remove a secret plank, and find a very good ring. Inside this room is a quest for Will's father, so make sure that you have Will in your party. And also in this room, with a sleeping NPC, is Halsin's quest, Druid Halsin quest. Or better to say, the Dream Quest. Dream Quest is actually the main quest of Act 2. So now, only, and only, once you're done with this entire segment, and with this entire segment, is when you're gonna go to the second floor, and you will speak with a cleric. Speaking with a cleric will activate an ambush, and there's gonna be a brawl in the end. So make sure that you finish everything, and that the final thing that you're gonna do is triggering cleric on a second floor. And that will be the first part of Act 2. 
Now that we're finished with Cleric, we need a Lantern that's gonna protect us from shadows. So, from here, you start the quest with Harpers. And Harpers will tell, take you all the way down south to this hut over here, where you're gonna trigger Karni's Lantern quest. Or better to say, you kill the boss over here, you get a Lantern, and then you can move on the entire map without triggering the Shadow Curse. You're gonna be protected from the shadows. Also, what I can say about this quest, you can do it with NPCs, you can do it alone, you can side with them so they take you to the Moonrise Towers, there's plenty of ways to do that. Also, where Carnis drops his lantern after he dies, you can keep the lantern to protect you from shadows, or you can interact with lantern and see what happens. So let's cover the barrack quickly and what's close by. After you're done with Carnis and his lantern, this is where the ambush starts with Harpers on a rooftop, you can loot a rooftop key, you can unlock a chest and find a good amulet over here, and there is additional chest down south, and that's the area around the barrack. Now you're done with the barrack, you're gonna go north again, you're gonna collect tons of keys over here, and we're gonna start transferring to the east, eastern part. Now, what to say about here? You can move up here. There is a 30 perception check for the ambush. If you don't detect enemies, there is no need to worry. You just sneak up from right over here, and you trigger the fight with plants again. This time, it's a big bus plant. The safe way from where to trigger the ambush would be from over here. You trigger with one over here, you put some ice, you put, you know, crowd control spells and so on. Then you move everyone over here and you fight them as they come on. Very simple fight to resolve, basically. After you're done with plants ambush, you're gonna loot the key for the chest and you're gonna unlock the chest with a fire damage ring inside. After the plant ambush, you're gonna go behind, you're gonna go down this road over here, and you're gonna trigger a shadowed battlefield waypoint. After the waypoint, you can go uphill, and this is extremely important. This is Halsin's quest for the shadow, for the shadow curse. Halsin's quest starts in the middle here, and you find a very curious ghost, and you can find some good items in the chest, like a ring over here, there is a puzzle boss fight over here, do not kill the shadow, play by his rules if you wanna clear the curse. And then you're gonna tell Halsin what happened after this in the camp. Basically, the shadow will ask you to play hide and seek, play it. Also, you can find a very good stealth ring in this area. So after we're done here, you go to the camp, trigger Halsin, and he will tell you what to do next. Now. From the waypoint over here, we can go climb up, use a manual dig on the top, then go down south, then go uphill again, and manually dig again. So, two times loot in this area. Now we're done everything here, okay, from the barracks, from all of this part, and now we're gonna cover the sides of this map. What you can also do now, from the manual dig, you're gonna go down here, you're gonna pass where you were, you're gonna go down, up over here, and loot the chest down south. Once you're done with the chest, you can pass back, go down, and save Roland. Okay, from the last light in, Tifling. It depends how you played, okay, during Act 1. If you played how you're supposed to play, then Roland is alive, and this is where you can save him. Or you can let him die from the two shadows that will attack Roland. Once you're done with Roland, Load the chest over here, and there's two additional chests close by to Roland. This segment is now done. We can again transfer to the waypoint, Shadow Battlefield, and this time we're gonna go down south all the way this route over here. Now we can go north, or we can go south. First, we're gonna go north. From this route over here, we're gonna find a chest. All the way up north is additional chest, and over here is where the NPC awaits you if you decided to enter from the Moonrise Tower. So better to say this is a different beginning, different entry only. Collect these two chests, go down south again, go over here, collect a chest, trigger the ambush, the last ambush, with plants, kill them for the additional XP, and inside the chest there's gonna be an ice knife spell in amulet okay basically loot amulet with ice knife spell now everything is done there is only the small part over here and we can transfer to this one so from the waypoint now we go all the way up here and there is a perception ambush check with 
measles okay there's only four of them very easy to kill for the xp kill them loot the chest up here with gloves and there is a very important quest item as well if you can lock pick this chest there is a key inside the vase over here so you can unlock the chest once we're done with measles we go back up there are around six torches shining light blue all you need to do is destroy the torches and a fight will happen with shadow dogs basically shadow mastiff dogs kill them get additional experience and a ring as a reward now we are done with this entire segment there are quests with halcyon and there is a basement in the last light in it's time to do those two once you spoke with halcyon find items that you need to find you're gonna go to the dreamer inside the inn right over here halcyon will tell you to wait for him up on a hill you trigger the quest with halcyon you're gonna defend halcyon while enemies keep spawning and spawning okay over here there is a total of 2918 xp from this combat okay from this ambush probably the biggest amount of xp in act 2 and once you're done with all of that it's time to go with that moon lantern and protection from saloon from the cleric inside the basement over here on the map the last part basically you can enter this area only with resists or better to say with saloon's blessing and with a moon lantern that you got from Carnis boss from the ambush are there different lanterns in a game yes there are there is one inside the moonrise tower as well but later about it that's for a different run that's for the evil run so over here inside the cursed house is a way down go down here we are at the last light in cellar the basement of last light in so depends where you entered whether from the last light in basement or from the cursed house no matter how the map remains the same if you entered from the cursed house this is the way this is where you're gonna spawn if you entered from the basement in the last light in then this is where you'll spawn now let's say you entered from the cursed house the first thing that you will notice is a hidden door behind you you can trigger that one go up here sneak teleport to the platform and trigger the ambush with minlux kill them all they bring a lot of xp collect the last light key then go down south break the wall enter loot everything there is here there's a lot of stuff okay and what's important to say you can manually dig over here for loot and there is a new key for the last light in then you're gonna go down south again you're gonna loot all of this you're gonna spot a hidden wall you're gonna break the wall care for the explosive barrel on this side so do it with weapons not with spells so you don't trigger the explosion and loot the chest over here go up take the illumination ring care for this chest as well because it's trapped and that would be the last light in cellar exit on this part if you entered from here if you entered from here exit here okay that will be the entire map of the last light in cellar let's go up now i can say that we're done with the entire eastern part of the act two now we're gonna go to the western part of act two which is way much bigger than the eastern part so you can cross on the western part from three different bridges your choice where you want to cross i recommend the very first bridge so you can immediately trigger the waypoint of right wing town and once inside the right wing town you can pick where you want to go this is your choice whether you want to go north to the center square to the tall house to the waning moon inn to the house of healing to the mason's guild or to the mausoleum and everything that belongs to it basically there's six areas in this part each area is unique with unique encounters and loot uh what i would recommend is to start from the close by or better to say from the mason's guild it's the closest and the easiest one so let's go to mason's guild so from the eight wind portal we go up north loot everything there is in this area crap items basically you have one chest on a rooftop of the mason's guild you have a perception check over here 
And you have an infernal iron for Karla quest over here. That would be the end. Inside this building is the entrance to the cellar and you can go down. Let's go down immediately. Here we are at the Mason's Guild cellar. You're gonna start up from this room. You will have a perception check for a keyhole. You're gonna use a tower key from the inn. You find the tower key in the inn from one of the NPCs, by the way. I won't discover from whom. And you're gonna spot a hidden wall over here. One way is to destroy, the other way is just put the key inside and move on. Once you move on, this area is full with traps as well as a trapped chest over here. Then you go down south, enter the room over here where an ambush with the wraith and shadows await. Best to trigger from this spot over here and kill them fast. Once you're done with Wrath and Shadows, there is a quest note over here to collect, as well as a chest with a helmet inside. The chest is trapped. On this side is a Moonrise note that you can collect, and there is a perception button over here. Again, a perception check that will unlock the door over here, where you enter the last room, full with loot, with chests and so on, where you can loot all, and that would be the entire mason's guild cellar let's go up so once we're done with the mason's guild we can slowly traverse to the house of healing and do everything there is around this area now the first thing that you want to do after you enter the mason's guild is to collect a ring over here with a perception check after that you're gonna go lock pick a door and find good boots with faint that spell after we're done with this four, we go up north, where we're gonna find a very good wizard armor inside this building, on this spot. Now, once we're done with this part, you can also go down south and save a kid from the shadows. This kid is extremely important for the storyline as well. Now we can say that we're done with the middle north part of the map. It is time that we transfer to the very big part and the House of Healing. House of Healing has like seven or eight different entrances from the basement from the rooftop from the second floor from the main door your choice where you want to enter i recommend going down here and entering from this route over here once you enter in the first room there's gonna be a chest with a poison gloves and a key if you decided to enter from the main hallway you're gonna meet a receptionist over here and you're gonna trigger the entire story with a butcher of this area or better to say the surgeon so once you enter over here it's an immediate surgeon once you enter from down here it's conversations into the surgeon your choice how you want to do it and from what side make one playthrough for this side the other playthrough for this side anyways after we find poison gloves and after we find a key we go down south open the door find the scrolls over here go south again and here is where the surgeon is in the big main room now about the surgeon fighting him is fun but it's not worth it in terms of experience so it is far better to make him suicide through a conversation and then kill the sisters. That's the biggest amount of experience that you're gonna get. If you make him kill his sisters and then kill himself, you'll get lesser amount of experience than just killing himself. Or better said, make him suicide. If you decide to fight them all, you're gonna receive the smallest amount of XP. So, once you kill a surgeon, you will have an option to absorb his weave his magic if you decide to do so you should do it if you are evil if you are good you should decide to erase the weave what you get out of it if you absorb you get an extra spell usage basically if you absorb the weave and this is where the in sleep quest triggers you know what i was talking about the one with halsin all the way up in the last light in over here this is very connected to that one you will need an item over here to trigger the one up here with Halsey. There is a way up and down from this side. There is a chest on a rooftop, by the way, on this building. There is another chest on a rooftop over here. And there is a key for the rooftop over here. There is also a library on a rooftop that you can unlock if you find the key that's right over here. Now we're gonna go down south to the House of Healing. After the library key rooftop, you're gonna end up on the elevator. And 
there is a button on the middle floor to trigger the elevator. Inside the House of Healing, you can find a charm amulet on this location. There is also a ladder that leads you up to the rooftop. In this area over here, where you can access from here or from here, your choice where you want to access, or from the inside the building, there is a trader that you can steal from and then kill for the additional experience. Now, why do I still kill that easily if it's a trader? Because it's one of the sisters. Do not worry about it. She's a zombie. And over here is a Tiefling quest as well, or better to say, one of the kid's parents. Basically how it's connected. Here, where you save a kid, she asks you to find her parents, her parents are right over here, and then you meet her in a camp, and quest proceeds. So this is where their parents are. Now once we're done with this part of the House of Healing, we're gonna go down south, there is an ethic over here that you can climb up and look at everything there is as well as two keys where the receptionist is you can also kill the receptionist and behind you can find twin ring first part of the twin rings now that we're fully done with the house of healing we can go up over here trigger the fight the ambush with enemies over here i think it's a raid dogs shadows and so on you kill them and you unlock a morgue entry. Morgue entry can be accessed from over here. Okay, this is House of Healing Morgue. You can enter from here in the morgue, or you can decide to enter from all the way up north over here from the crevice. I recommend entering from the crevice. So forget about the entry over here. Go back, and we're gonna go north to discover the Grand Mausoleum waypoint and then we do the final part of this let's say north part of the area so once we're done with the mason's guild and with the house of healing and with the combat ambush and with everything that you can loot around here okay we go up north trigger that waypoint and the first thing that you're gonna do is manually dig in this location over here for some loot and then we're gonna trigger a starion's quest with Raphael, with the devil all right, where he's gonna give you an additional quest of what to do and how to do it and so on. Don't want to spoil that. After we're done with the devil, just make sure that you have a Starion in your team when you trigger this. We do not go into Mausoleum. We're gonna go down here, fight with a fish. There's a huge fish ambush over here. Very nice fight, by the way. We're gonna collect the chest here. We're gonna collect another chest over here. And now we go down south, down into the crevice or better to say this is the house of healing morgue one entry and the other one is right over here they're connected these two spots you're basically under the house of healing now let's go down welcome to the house of healing morgue this is how the map looks like if we entered from crevice this is where we start if we entered from the house of healing on the left side where you fight with shadows this is where you will spawn so once you go into the crevice you go down south you go all the way down 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 and there is an ooze ambush kill them for additional xp and items go back use misty step or jumping or whatever collect the chest there's a good cape inside of the chest jump over here you miss the step and so on and go down south here down south you're gonna spot a hidden button and you're gonna open the door once you open the door an immediate fight will open up with bunch of zombies kill those zombies they are very vulnerable to radiant damage shadow heart absolutely annihilates zombies once we kill all the zombies we want to disarm the traps everything is plagued with traps all you need to do is drag and drop big barrels on top of the traps and mystery is solved once we disarm all of those traps we're gonna go down south we're gonna collect the chest over here we're gonna take the key from the corpse and we're gonna find a book that's gonna give us additional 60 xp with a key that we found we're gonna go up here unlock the door with a key use a perception on a lever over here and loot the ring in the chest over here then we're going back all the way up here Use a perception check for the button, click on a button, open a door, loot the amulet inside, and loot a ring on a corpse. Then, we're gonna exit through here, and up 
we go again to the main world map. This is where we'll exit from down there. And the first thing that you want to do is finish manual digging over here. Check out how the Absolute Army looks like. They're over here. And one quick note, if you decide to teleport in the army, okay, in their camp, you're going to be transferred, TP'd immediately into the tower, okay, Moonlight Towers, inside the prison. This is one way to access the prison, prison cells and avoid everything here. So one of the ways is just TPing into the enemy's camp. Aside from that, from this spot where the morgue entry is, you can also go down south and have a manual dig spot over here, as well as a brewer's alchemical stash. Once you loot this too, you're gonna go down south again. Make sure that you have Lazel in, you, in your team, because here there's gonna be a Vlakets Gityanki ambush. They're gonna try to kill your entire squad and Lazel. So make sure that you have Lazel here. Once you win this fight over here and loot them all, you're gonna trigger the waypoint to Boulder's Gate. That's it for this entire segment. Now, when we should enter Gauntlet of Shar, or better to say Mausoleum, not yet. First, we finish the south part, and as the final part of the game, we're gonna finish the Gauntlet of Shar. That's how it is. That should be the right way. Okay, now, sh should you do it immediately? If you feel like doing this dungeon immediately, do it. But my recommendation is... Finish the southern and the last part of the main world map before going to the Gauntlet of Shar. I did it the other way around and I regretted it. If I was to play again, I would do this part and then I would do the Gauntlet of Shar. So now we have the entire segment done, the entire segment up here done. And we did the Halsin portal, defend the portal quest. Then we spoke with Halsin. Halsin joins you. He wants to clear the Shadow Curse and whatnot. And then when you accept the quest and everything that happens along the way, in short, you're gonna be teleported to the center of the map. Okay. And here is where the Halsin quest will end. I don't want to spoil anything further. Once you do that, we can say that the center is done. That's about it. Now, what is important to say after you're done with Halsin, of course, you're gonna have a square puzzle. You have a solution on my YouTube channel. Square puzzle will unlock a hidden Sharan Century mini dungeon. Let's go down. This would be the mini dungeon. When do I recommend doing the mini dungeon? I recommend doing it just before Act 2 is about to end before you go and fight the final fight with the final boss of the Act 2. Why do I recommend doing it like that? Because here where the statues are, they give on the successful check plus 5 to intelligence until a long rest, plus 5 to charisma until long rest, and plus 5 to wisdom until long rest. So you can enter and do it immediately, but I highly recommend this once you decide to fight Keteric Thorn. This is the correct way to do it, by the way. Now, it doesn't matter that you're gonna do it at the end. Once you do this three, a door will open once you're done with all of these three skill checks. And here, you can have a blood offer. And this is what you're gonna get. If you steal, you're gonna fight Justiciars. If you decide to do the blood offering, you're gonna get additional experience and additional loot with some great potions will spawn on this side and on this side over here. That's the dungeon. Do it in the last 5% of the Act 2 when you'll know how to do it. Very simple. When the war starts, that's where you wanna trigger this puzzle and this entire quest before entering the war for this perma buffs until long rest because you won't rest anymore until act three so on your final rest in act two is where you want to trigger this dungeon let's go up now imagine the line from rate wind town like this and like this this is the segment that's left everything that's left in the act two 
Let's say you start up from the road to Baldur's Gate Waypoint, where the ambush with Githyanki was. Now we're gonna go down here, down south, we're gonna load a key, and we're gonna use manual dig on this spot over here, go up to the Waning Moon Inn. Here we are at the Waning Moon Inn. Once you enter inside, on the second floor, there is a key, there is a chest over here, there is a chest with great loot over here, and there is a secret plank with additional experience on this spot. At the middle of the inn would be, I think it's Ketrick Storm's son, I'm not sure though, but anyways, there are plenty of ways to deal with him. You can fight him, or you can use conversation and drink him to death. Anyways, killing Ketrick Storm's son will give more experience through conversation, or better to say, Conversation kill will give you 300 experience more. After we're done with this part of the inn, a secret door will unlock once he's done, and you're gonna use his key once you loot the corpse, open this up, collect the quest for he who was. This is Melina's uh, book, okay? From this moment here, you go all the way up, find he who was, and resolve meddling and you resolve Medellin book quest. Your choice how you want to resolve it. Basically, this is where the quest for he who was ends. Okay, so now down. Also, you're gonna have a manual dig inside over here. You're gonna have a chest with a great club inside of it. You're gonna have a trap door and you're gonna have additional three chests in this area. And that would be the waning moon part. Now we go south from the center all the way up to the toll house. You can go from Raytwin Town straight to the toll house. You could pick this one to be your first area as well when you cross the bridge. This is also very important to do and extremely funny. So before we enter Moonrise Towers, we're gonna go and finish with the final part, or better to say, the Toll House. Now this would be the Toll House. On a TP waypoint from right with down, you're gonna go down south and you're gonna loot the key. You're gonna enter here, there is a key on the middle floor of the map, there is a perception check on the middle, middle floor of the map. There is a chest in the middle floor of the map. There is a toll house clerk key at the bottom of the map. There is a perception check here as well. Then there is gold everywhere from the boss. There is a basement key from the toll house over here. This is where the basement is. This is the key that unlocks the basement. Okay, you will need to go around though to enter the basement, but later with it. There are gloves inside the chest over here on floor 2. There is also a chest in the middle floor and there is a barred door right on this spot that you can break with enough force or you can enter from the rooftop or you can jump from this spot through a window in the middle floor. Your choice how you want to loot this chest. Best to do with a rooftop hidden entry of course. And in this part is where the boss is. Tollhouse boss. I don't want to spoil much. Basically the boss awaits you on a second floor and all you need to also do is explore the rooftop for additional loot. Loot. There, you cannot miss a bloody thing on the roof, by the way. Once you're done with the boss, you're gonna find a statue over here. If you whack the statue, it's gonna break the floor. And then you can jump down and collect the chest and collect double chests on floor 1. Okay, this is like the, the first floor with double chests on this area. And there is a button as a way out. Once the statue drops, breaks the floor, you go down. The way out is with a hidden button over here. It leads you to this spot, and then you go directly to the toll house basement, and that's the toll house. Now let's go to the toll house basement. Again, before we go, make sure that you're ready for the boss. A hint, and a mini spoiler, leave all gold in your camp. Now let's go to the toll house basement. This would be the toll house basement. What is there to say about it? There is one perception button. It's gonna unlock a door. You're gonna loot everything that's inside. And there is a way down that unlocks the map that's down under. So we're gonna to go down. And now this is the basement of the basement. Or better to say this is how it looks like. You wanna loot this entire area as well. There is some notes in this part over here. And that's about it. That will be the toll house basement. Now, this might change if you go with the evil run. Something could happen over here on my run. Or better to say good guy run. Nothing happened. 
or they plan something with the upcoming patches for this one. I don't know. To be honest, this is probably the emptiest area in X2. Let's go up. And now we're done with the Waning Moon, with a Toll House, with a Mason's Guild, with a House of Healing, with a House of Healing Morgue, with a Toll House Basement, and every mini dungeon over here that exists. What we need to do now is from the square, from the center of Right Point Town, we go down south and we trigger the Moonrise Tower's waypoint. And now we are in the Moonrise Tower, the final area of the surface next to so once we trigger the waypoint for the moonrise towers we want to go up here down the stairs down where the bridge is under the bridge there's a manual dig spot and then you can traverse over here all the way down and loot everything there is on this spot you go from here now you're gonna jump from this spot Trigger the NPC of the Absolute over here. And once you trigger the NPC of the Absolute here, you can pick whether you want to fight the entire tower or you want to do this peacefully. I recommend doing it peacefully because there are traders inside the tower and you just don't want to fight. First, you want to trade, loot, steal, and then you want to wage war against the Absolute or join them. Your choice how you want to do it. Basically, after you're done with the NPC here, you're gonna go down south, all the way up here, and there is a battle, a tadpole battle, with two tadpoles inside. All you need to do is sneak and steal the battle. No one will notice if you sneak. Once you steal the battle, you're gonna get these little things, okay, for additional upgrades. Anyways, if you wanna upset the entire map, you will destroy the battle and the fight starts. Now your choice want to do it this is basically where they prepare the war with their battleships for the attack on boulders gate once we're done with the battles we go down south loot everything in this area there's basically bullshit here but no matter loot it go up go all the way up right through the waypoint from the moonrise tower now we use the main bridge and we enter the moonrise towers main area moonrise tower consists out of four areas basement or better to say the prison main floor first floor and the final floor where Ketrick Torm awaits let's start from the beginning once we enter the moonrise towers the first thing you want to do is check the trader over here he's got angelic potions and he's got some good gear try to steal if you can steal trade get all of those good items away from him after we're done with the trader we're gonna go down here and trigger the suspicion sounds quest suspicion sounds is basically on the grades over here where you see the red wines over here you need to follow these grades, step on these planks, and trigger the suspicious sound quests right on this crevice here. To make it short and how to orient, the trader sits over here. You just go straight forward like this from the trader, and you trigger it here on the crevice. This would be the suspicious sounds quest that you're gonna get from here. I don't wanna spoil anything further. Once you collect the quest for suspicious sounds, you go south, you go down here, and there is a crack in a wall loot is inside break the wall and loot now from the trader on the first floor we're gonna go down here all the way up here here enter this room and there is a trader over here every origin character including other companions can give blood and receive a special potion out of this trader also Astarian quest is with this trader over here as well. So make sure that you have a Astarian in your party. This trader also sells some good items and it's worth stealing from. So finish this room, finish this trader, and now you can trigger the fight with absolute cultists. Also, on this floor, once you're done with the trader, you go north and you go up here. And there is a NPC that's gonna give you a tadpole on kill. Basically, the gnolls that you can turn to kill this NPC and leave you a tadpole. Now, why are you in Moonrise Towers? Not only because of Keterik Torm and because of the Absolute and so on, you're also here if you play as a good guy to save civilians. One prison entry is outside on this spot over here, and the other prison entry is 
inside this room so between the trader and the suspicion sounds quest there is a mini room over here where the prison stairs are let's go down to the prison so here we are in a prison if you entered from the towers this is where you end up if you enter from the docks this is where you end up so basically it's connected one leads outside one leads inside from the entry down south is the room full with scrolls loot everything in this room then we go down here this is where the prison cells are or better to say this five here are tiefling slaves here are gnome slaves both quests lead to the less light in save the civilians basically that's the quest so this is cell number one cell number two cell number three cell number four and cell number five in cell number one you can dig manually here for additional loot this is where the gnomes are this is where the oubliette entry is later about it and this is where the tieflings are in cell number five there's absolutely nothing so over here we got one guard and we got two eyes that are patrolling around you can sneak attack on the eyes if with a stadion for example and if you kill this guard while no one is watching no one will get alarmed so you can set the prisoners free how you set the prisoners free you go down the bridge over here you speak with a warden you're gonna steal from the warden and then you're gonna kill the warden and there are levers on the side here. Big lever sounds the alarm. Do not pull the big lever. Pull the small levers and you can unlock all of this. Now, if you decide to do that, they, the NPCs, gnomes and tieflings, they will start running from here and they're gonna get attacked and they're gonna die. What is the proper way? The proper way is to kill the warden, then you go up, okay? And there is Volbren's uh, hammer on the top floor you take the hammer and you bring it to Wolbren over here where the gnomes are you can talk through the bars okay once you get him the hammer he's gonna break the wall he's gonna go up all the way up here and he's gonna set the tieflings free then they all gonna go together tieflings and gnomes combined and wait you by the escape boat that leads the less light in now you don't want to go with them immediately and you don't want to send them alone once you give him the hammer you're gonna go back you're gonna collect the chests and everything there is on floor number one and floor number two on this part and you're gonna trigger the oblate way down this is the first way down this is the second way down and all the way down here is the third way down to oblate also on this spot, if you need keys, this guard also has a key if you kill it. Once all of this is done, there is one manual dig close by the boat over here. You're gonna go to Oubliette from the spot number three. Here and here, on Oubliette way down one and Oubliette way down two, you need feather fall. Here you can climb down. Let's go down to Oubliette. This is the Oubliette map. But the only part that's going to be available when you enter from prison is this and nothing else. This is the entry. This is where you're gonna kill two horrors. You're gonna loot everything there is. You're gonna go downstairs. You're gonna enter this big room. You're gonna find a pin over here. A hard pin. And you're gonna find one tadpole worm over here. And that's about it. You can't make progress anywhere else. All you need to do now is get out and we finish the rest of this part later on. Now, up to the prison. Now that we're done with the entire prison segment, now that we set gnomes and tieflings free and they await us by the boat, when we're done with Oubliette, when we looted and collected everything from this area, then you're gonna trigger the conversation with tieflings and with gnomes by the escape boat and you'll say, I'll follow you back to the less light inn. Why? To collect rewards. There's amazing rewards now because you saved every single NPC in Act 2. Let's go to the less light end. Once in a less light end, there's gonna be three NPCs to talk with. Alfira, one gnome, and one tiefling. Make sure that you spot who the new NPCs are, talk with them, and grab rewards. There's gonna be everything. Gold, items, experience. Once you're done with all the NPCs inside the house, go over here, by the bridge, and 
trigger the quest with Bex and her husband, and you're gonna receive additional experience. Now you're done, and you can TP back to the Moonrise Towers and do the first floor, finish it up, do the second floor, and then you're gonna see what's next. So now when we're done with prison, with the less light in, with civilians, with a trader in Moonrise Tower floor 1, with a quest over here, with another trader here, with a quest over here, with a silent quest and so on, everything that I showed you basically, it is time that you enter the main room where Ketrick Torm awaits trigger the cinematic once everything resolves. If you decide to kill these two goblins on your own, you will receive additional 110 XP more. And now, once you're done with Torm, you go stairs up, all the way up here, and over here to the second floor. Let's go to the second floor. Here we are at the second floor of the Moonrise Towers. This is the entry. On the left side, you're gonna talk with the NPC and she's gonna give you the quest to find Balthazar in the Gauntlet of Shard map, or better to say, in the Mausoleum, all the way up north over here. Okay, that's how it starts, and that's how you should do it. I did it the other way around and I, now I regret it, okay, because first I entered here, finished everything in Mausoleum, and then I discovered the quest down there. This is the correct way, okay. From this NPC, you get the Gauntlet of Shard quest. Once you do the quest, you go into this room, loot and steal everything that you can, and once you're done with this room, you're gonna unlock the door here and you're gonna enter this area here, or better to say, this is Balthazar's room the guy that you need to find in the Gauntlet of Shar, Necromancer of Ketarik Tor. In his room, there is a moon lantern, there is a chest with a cape inside of it, and there is a note about the last prince of Gityanki, aka Orpheus. Here is a puzzle that you can find on my YouTube channel as well, that's gonna unlock the hidden door right over here, where you're gonna enter, you're gonna loot the chest, you're gonna... You're gonna loot another chest, and you're gonna have an option to craft a Shadow Lantern. Now, if you play as evil, and you were starting from here, this is the way to get the Lantern extremely fast. Okay, instead of getting it from Karnis, you're gonna get it right from this spot over here. If you play as good, you're gonna get it from Karnis anyways. Instead of crafting, if you already have a lantern, you can destroy this entire ritual process. Once we're done with Balthazar's room and his laboratory, we're gonna exit on this door, end up on a balcony over here, and from the balcony, there are planks that you can jump on and reach uh, in between floor 3 and floor 2, so between area, where you're gonna get to fight 3 fiends. Okay, for additional experience, basically. And that's about it with this part. Now, from the balcony, there is another door. The door that's gonna lead you here. You're gonna meet a very interesting NPC inside this room. Basically, this room and this room, they're all full to the brim with story, with notes about what's actually happening with a shadow curse. So this is one huge spoiler, these two rooms over here. Be careful about the mimic, because this is not a chest, it's a mimic in this room. And you got a way up and down from this part. One leads all the way down to the planks on the middle floor between floor one and two in this area. Anyways, that would be the first floor, or better say the second floor of the Moonrise Towers. Now that you got a quest, for the Gauntlet of Shar, let's go to, I can easily say, the final dungeon of the game. You enter the Gauntlet of Shar from the Mausoleum entry, Grand Mausoleum Waypoint, all the way north, and the quest begins. Let's go. Once more, this is how the door looks like where you should enter for the Gauntlet of Shar map. Here we are at the Grand Mausoleum. This is the entry point, and there is one NPC over here you want to speak with, there is stuff to loot on this part, there is a cape inside of this chest on the right part, and you're gonna proceed forward, do the 100 traps map, you're gonna resolve the puzzle with three 
paintings, okay, that's also on my YouTube channel, if you want to check it out. And this is how you resolve, basically you trigger Moonrise first, and then the Grief, and then the General, and the door will open up, and the elevator will now lead you to the Gauntlet of Shire. That's basically everything there is with the Mausoleum map. There is no combat, there's basically nothing, it's just there for the story, okay? If you pay attention on Sarcophagus here, you can find out what's the story about. This is basically the dead family of Keterik Torm, the main villain of Act 2. Let's go down to the Gauntlet of Shire from this spot over here. All that you need to do is click on Traversal Gem and down you go. This would be the Gauntlet of Shar map. It's consisted out of a few levels, I would say two or three levels, and it's full to the brim with secrets, encounters, combat, and everything that you can imagine. A full, proper dungeon. Probably the best dungeon in the game that I've seen so far. So, from the elevator, you go up north where you're gonna find a switch open a door and now in this part is the puzzle statue also solution is on my youtube channel once you resolve the puzzle the door will open and the next area will open up in short how you resolve the puzzle without triggering levers without triggering light and so on all you need to do is when you enter from this side okay where the elevator was so when you open the door and when you enter over here you stand right over here you move here then here then here click and the door opens that's the puzzle now on the right side there is absolutely nothing believe it or not so we are going down left we don't go where the door opened we're gonna go down left right over to this part let's go to progress on this part, all you need to do is jump on shrooms and trigger an ambush. You fight this fight, you're gonna loot the chest and you're gonna continue down this route over here. Once you pass through here and you enter this room, there are some red NPCs over here that I won't spoil for you. And there is a key on this side and the door that you can unlock and move forward. In this room... There is a wave and a wave and a wave of Justiciars that you'll need to fight. Once you're done, the door will open, Balthazar will show up. Okay, this is where Balthazar is, the quest from the Moonrise Towers, where you can now decide what to do with him. Kill him, negotiate with him, do his bidding, and so on. Now it's your choice how you want to do it. Also, don't forget to loot the chest inside this room. Balthazar... On a kill all leaves 816 experience in total. Also on this side is a raised dead amulet from Balthazar once he's done and a chest over here as well as two chests on this side but you'll need to jump to get them. That would be the Balthazar's room and two waves of Justiciars. Also on this side is a 30 DC lockpick check that's gonna unlock this room this room right in front of you are tons of chests that you can loot and some skeletons and so on make sure that you loot everything that's inside this room including those scrolls including the rings and carla iron okay and the umbral gem and so on so everything is in this room basically once we're done with this room we go down south and we're gonna go to the right all the way to the waypoint let's go over there now now we're done with the center down center part we're done with all of this all of that okay and we are at the middle part where the waypoint is there's two ways to go the first way is down the stairs where we need to finish the trials of Shar. Okay, a soft step trial, self same trial, uh, fate leap trial, and we receive gems that we're gonna need for this elevator over here. Umbral gems, okay, one of them is over here, as you can see. Why do we need the gems? Gems are for this elevator here that stares straight into the statue of Shar. Once you put them in, you discover the final secret of this map, aka the main quest of Act 2, reach the Night Song. Night Song's quest. So, let's go down and finish the trials first, this part. The first trial, right in front of us, would be a soft step trial. 
there are a lot of books in this area. Now, what is the best way to resolve everything here? Okay, the best way is to sneak with a Starion and backstab the shadows and reach the Umbral Gem on the other side. Basically, this is a labyrinth where you need to pass. There are buttons, there are hidden walls, there are levers that unlock additional stuff and so on. Uh, you can jump through a window, you can pass over here. Anyways, the main objective is to reach the Umbral Gem. Your way, how you want to do it. Do you want to sneak through it? Do you want to attack with a study on? Do you want to use those levers and buttons and whatnot? Okay, there are two, three ways to resolve this. Just reach the Umbral Gem and collect the Umbral Gem. That's all that you need to do in the soft step trial. The next trial is the door right over here where where the self same trial starts self same trial also you need to loot the umbral gem and you need to fight meters or better to say you're gonna fight yourself in this room combat trial basically that's what it is just get the umbral gem and down we go through these stairs up here okay north then down right over here the stairs down where the statue is of Shar, all the way down to the last trial. The last trial is a fate leap trial. On this door is a fate leap trial and at the end over there is the final umbral gem that you need to loot. How to move through here? You got it on my YouTube channel. Just type fate leap trial. After we're done with the fate leap trial, we go to this room over here. Okay. Now, inside this room, there is a big combat awaiting for you. There's a lot of books. There's a lot of things to do, okay? There is a hidden button. There are four buttons, to be more precise, over here, okay? And every button triggers a nasty trap. This is the button you need to trigger to open the door on this trial. Once you finish the combat, of course, once you open this door, you enter the room, there is the Night Singer's book that you'll need to place on the altar that's gonna unlock this door. And from this door, you're gonna grab the Spear of the Night. If you plan to play as evil, you need Spear of the Night to finish the quest. If not, then this room is not that important at all. Although, even when you take Spear of the Night and you wanna play as good, Later, later on, you're gonna receive great benefits on the Spear of the Night. So, Insta benefits if you're evil, later benefits if you're good. Anyways, once you reach this room, collect Spear of the Night, collect this helmet up here, and off we go to the elevator to the top. The elevator is right over here, all you need to do is press the lever. Also, because it's the tricky area, I gotta show it through video as well. So where the elevator is, there is a cragged rock that you can climb down, and then you can climb even further down all the way to the legs of this statue of Shar. Okay, down there, you will see a pentagram that Raphael left. Raphael, before you enter the mausoleum map, gives you a quest to deal with a demon on this map and this is how he bound the demon under this statue you know where where the pentagram is here where the rats puzzle is anyways it's there for the terms of story is there as one way of how you can resolve the quest so that's the area all the way at the bottom of the map it's not that important but i do cover everything there is so need to say it so let's go up on the elevator here now we go to the waypoint of the gauntlet of shark we did all of the trials and everything that exists on the west part of the gauntlet of shark map so we did this part and we did this entire part the only thing that's left is the demon and Raphael's quest okay or better to say astarion's quest this is connected to astarion this segment is the last segment that we're gonna deal with. So, from the waypoint, we go up the stairs, we go through here, we're gonna loot the chest, there's a good bow inside. Then, then we're gonna go to the right, all the way up here. From here, we're gonna jump here, we're gonna trigger a very dangerous enemy. The enemy is gonna start running down here and enter here where the throne is. 
This is not how you want to do it, because this is the worst possible way. You're going to be in disadvantage, you're going to get ambushed, and you're going to get stomped. Instead of following the enemy like this, from this route, when he starts going over here, you will continue here, good entry point, jump, sneak, and open the fight with a demon right over from this spot. Behind, you can also loot a chest. Now, what is important to say about this fight? This is a Starions and Raphael quest. On a kill, you will get additional iron for Carla's quest. You can kill this boss in a conversation as well. If you decide to fight, you will get 1300 more experience than killing him with conversation. This is the main entry, this is the side entry. You can also access the fight from up here, from the north, but the best way is definitely through here. Care about the displacer, it's not only the boss and the ambush with the demons, it's also with displacers, or basically there's two mini bosses in this area. After you're done with this fight, you're gonna go up north, you're gonna get a key, you're gonna unlock the chest with a key, and inside the chest over here, there are barred boots. Once you're done with this segment over here, you're gonna transfer it to the left over here where it says door down. We can't reach it. We need to go down the stairs all the way down from over here. Then we jump down and then you can loot this with perception. So this is level under. The only way to reach it is like this from over here and it's also there because of the storyline. This is the only thing that exists. So this is floor down, where the barred boots are beneath that. This is the only access point. These are all ways up and down, okay, to climb up and down. And basically that's the area. Now you got all umbral gems and what not. We're gonna go and unlock the elevator, where the, the elevator that looks on the statue of Shar. And down we go for the night zone. This is where the elevator will lead us to, to this area. All you need to do is enter the Shadowfell here, Shadowfell entrance. Trigger the final waypoint and you go for the Night Song. Now, as far as Night Song goes, Night Song is connected to Shadowheart's quest as well as the main quest of the area. She is strongly connected to a lot of NPCs in the game as well as with the main villain Ketterick Thorn. And if you decide to set her free, she joins your fight. If you decide to kill her, everything goes to shit, but I don't want to spoil. So, let's say you decided to free the Night Song and now she says that we need to finish Act 2 and kill Ketterick Thorn. Let's go and do it. Ketterick Thorn is on the final floor of the Moonrise Towers. The way to reach it is from the first floor of Moonrise Towers through this door right over here and you end up on the third floor. Let's go on the third floor. This would be the third floor and the place where you get to fight Ketterick Torm. Once you're done with Ketterick Torm, he's going to escape even deeper. What you need to do is loot the corpses, loot the chest over here and go down the broken chimney. That chimney that he broke, or better to say this, whatever the hell it is, this thing will lead you straight down to Oubliette. You remember that part where we could not access from the prison? Well, now you can access that part. So let's go to the final, final map of Act 2 to chase Ketrick Thor. This would be Oubliette. As far as quests go and the companions, I recommend having Carla and Will before entering the final part of Oubliette, because their quests are strongly connected to this area. You're here to save Will's father, and Carla knows the demons behind the entire plot as well. So you have Carla and Will, and you pick the third companion on your own. This is where also the game can end if you play as Gale and you trigger the atomic bomb inside his chest, but later about it. The Oubliette first part that we could reach from the prison was this one, so there is nothing to say about it, but the Oubliette where we're gonna go is all of this segment here and the final part, how and what it consists of. The first thing would be the entry point. This is the entry point. From this part, we go down here and we go down south. Down south is the Butcher and a good friend from the prologue. Set him free, kill the Butcher, 
Use the device over here. It's going to drop a corpse, loot a corpse. This segment is done. Now we go down here. You're going to fight with the undead. Kill the undead, get the XP. Then we're going to go down south over here where the chest is to loot. There is the mind upgrades. Now what are the mind upgrades? Brain, that's going to trigger this. You collected brains, if you remember, since Nautiloid. All right. And when you find these things along the way, okay, in Nautiloid Prologue, in Act 1, then in Act 2, you pile them up. And before entering Oubliette, you want to have them in your stash. Because you can put these brains on the device. And this device over here will give you like, a lot of story points, a lot of weird moments, as well as some permanent upgrades. So make sure that you have those brains, or better to say mines. Once done with this area, we go down here. There is a Brain Blast puzzle that you can find on my YouTube channel as well. It's very easy. The Brain Blast puzzle will unlock a door. Once inside, there is a mine that you can loot and bring it down to the device over here where you get a perma upgrade. There is, as well as another brain, gloves and helmet and a long sword to loot. And over here would be Illithid story, story of Illithids. Once we're done with the entire south part and the entry part, we're gonna go here where the undead were, go up north and go further up north and trigger these passages. Okay, here there's a bunch of books, things to loot basically on this, in these areas. So once you loot all of this, trigger the conversation here with Cressa, kill her, get the XP, loot the chest, Go down this route over here. There is now Will's quest. Trigger the Will's quest. You decide what you want to do with Will. Okay. And inside the pool, there is a tadpole. Loot it. Down here, you want to kill all of those brains that are roaming around the map. And in this area, there is a device over here that's going to set the last prisoners free. Or better to say, you're going to set Zevlor free, if you know who Zevlor is from Act 1. Setting Zevlor free inside the pod over here will also upset the Mind Flayers. So you're going to fight the Mind Flayers as well. And once you kill them and Zevlor is free, you're going to go down south all the way up to this room. You're going to loot the Mind. And you're gonna restore your HP and spells, because resting is not allowed in this place. You're gonna go with this mind, trigger on device, go back up, trigger the elevator, the way down, and the final boss of Act 2 will start. I don't want to spoil anything else. Here you can loot some books after the fight with the final boss, and that's about it. After this area, all you need to do is go back up. Speak with the NPCs, go to the less light, see how the world changed, for better or for worse, depends on your choices, of course. And now, once you resolved all quests and whatnot, the exit, or better to say, where you start, the Act 3 and Exit Act 2, is right over here on the waypoint road to Boulder's Gate. All you need to do is click on the door and the Act 3 will start. That would be the guide, 100% guide for map 2, act 2 of Baldur's Gate 3. I really hope that you find this video useful. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching.